Does Kenjutsu uh, cover much in the way of blade-on-blade -blade interaction? Um, how do you mean? So, uh, so yeah, if you want to switch out with this little nuts, then, uh, then, uh, then on the strike, the sharp edges will notch into each other mm -hmm. for a split second. And uh, with the nylon or the nut steel, then nobody really has a, a tactile feel for that because the, the moment of the bind is non existent, it just slingshots right off. Yes. But with the sharp, then, yeah. uh, then we found that it was not for that split second. Uh -huh. And that's why the earlier systems would make a huge deal about what they call the, the, the windings. And so, like from the notch, right. you, by torquing the sword, it pops it free from the notch at the same time mm. that with our cross guard here. Mm. Then we can, we can track. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the round suba, it protects the hands, but it doesn't provide quite the same opportunity for the for, for this trap. Yes, you're right. We don't go up. We don't trap. Yeah, we do have traps, but it's involved with the hands. Yeah, as, uh, as do we. Right. But if you, if we get a couple of these, I'll show you because I think these are that they, you can see them. Yes, geometry of the sword. So. Obviously, you guys have um, a two double-edged blade, right? Uh, we have a single, very, very sharp edge blade, and then we have the sides here, which we call shinogi. Shinogi are these sides here. The back is called the mune. These flat sides and top are what we block with. So we never, ever, ever, ever use the edge. Sharp edge. Yeah. Right, and part of that is in the construction. Because when a blade is forged, it's one piece of steel, you know, or at least it becomes one piece of steel. But different to the heart. But different to the temper. So the edge becomes brittle, but very, very sharp. So it'll hold a keen edge forever. I mean, we, have, we all have antiques that are hundreds, uh, very, several hundreds years old, and they are sharp as the day they were made. I've seen some with like the minor fractures because of because of right, the and that's well. exactly it. So these sides, though, are softer and more flexible, and the reason for that is when I cut in, when I'm driving through, because we were talking about that, that right hand pushes in, that left hand cuts. So there's a lot of pressure going through that blade. When we do that, you need the back to be flexible enough to sort of bend. Instead of shattering. Instead of shattering. Yeah, that's, that's the, the reason. The are like 60 Rockwell, roughly, and that the, the spine and back are to be as much as like 10 or 12 uh, Rockwell under that, around like yes. upper 40s and 50s. Yes. I mean, it's all, it, it, trust me, every, um, that's sort of a recipe that every swordsmith then kind of plays with. Yeah. Um, so the cutting ability, if you ever watch like videos online, you'll see like if they do it in slow motion, you'll see that blade when it goes through like the Tommy or something like that just flex like crazy. That flex but not break is, is the important aspect. So we want to preserve that whenever we're fighting. We don't want to ever approach it like, well screw it, I'm life or death, bang, oh there goes my sword, you know. Worse is if there's a flaw in the blade, snap, <laughs> there it goes. So whenever we strike, he, I know that no matter what, it's this sharp edge that's coming at me. And you're talking about how this geometry, how he moves his sword, where he places those hands, is gonna determine. I know what the sword is, because I'm always fighting the sword, so I know that it has to come in from certain ways. So I know the angle uh, that he's using, because I know the angle I'd have to use. That being said, when that comes in, I then want to use the soft part, the side, the shinobi, to strike against there. Now, yes, there's a little bit of carryover because nothing's perfect, it's and that's square. when you get a little bit of chips. Yeah, you're trying to minimize the direct opposition. Exactly. Now, another way to do that, of course, is to let it pass and then use the back of the blade to direct it away from me, and then now I've cleared yeah, the attack of the Exactly. Now, you were talking about like trapping the blade or with the suba. Well, for us, if I get tight enough in, as long as I'm in front of the suba, there's nothing he can do. Because if I get to here, if he moves up, down, left, right, doesn't matter. Yeah, then we start getting to that. That's probably the same thing with you guys. You guys get into grappling and all that. Range stuff. transitions. Is that Range right? transitions. Once we get into what we call a lockup, everything changes. The whole fight changes. That's what I'm sort of saying with you. But the basic idea is when he comes in to strike, I want to use my shinogi, the 
side of my blade to push out and through and notice that by doing that, the edge stays directly in front of me. So it never turns away, never goes off target. So I don't have to, in the middle of this, turn it back to cut. I know exactly where it is and it goes right to its target. Very fast. Because the more you do use that the edge, the harder it would be for it to realign. Exactly. Because our sharp cutting is the same exactly. thing. Exactly. You want to minimize your variables. Absolutely. Same thing, when he goes for the strike here, I'm going to push it out, and you know, you see, if I just touch him, he still gets me. And we don't have a huge guard here, so we can't protect ourselves. But I move it out, look what, the, look what happens, the geometry here. The more I push out, the more he moves. Again, clearing that center and me going here. The hard one is if he goes for the dough, because again, this has to be totally flat. If it's up, he hits the ribs. If it's down, he hits that hip. It has to be perfect, and then he can't go up when he cuts, or down when he cuts. You have to go through perfectly. So again, because I know this, when I block, I put my shinobi out there, bam. And again, ha, the sharp edge is right at him. So when I hit and bounce, hopefully bounce him off, it comes right at him. So yes, yeah, same exact concept, but we, I think the difference is we are very protective of that edge. That, that edge is more rigid because the European swords uh, uh, have been measured to be in the 40s to 50 run well. They've been, uh, they very rarely, um, like prior to the, to the 15, 1600s, uh, they very rarely like, uh, go up as far as 60 run well. Right. And so because of that, then, uh, then like my sword, I've actually hit like a knot that uh, yeah. would. And, and it turns the edge, and, and my edge has gone boom like that for over a quarter inch, and I can actually still tap it out and realign it uh, because, uh, because the steel is flexible enough to permit that without cracking. Yeah. See, we can. Yeah. We cut bamboo when we do our cuts, uh -huh. and we hit a knot, you're done. Yeah. You don't rip that hard. You'll have a giant chunk right there. <laughs> and believe me, there's only so much that to fix it, you have to do a whole polish, what's called polishing. Uh, so you, we don't, despite what you see in movies, you can't sit there with a stone. 